Evening, everybody. Blessed Thanksgiving again to all of you. It's great to have you here in our midst. Uh, the service today or tonight is uh, printed out for you in your service folder. Uh, you may remain seated. Uh, we're going to just go ahead with the invocation. As we worship the Lord, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I will not die, but live. And will proclaim what the Lord has done. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, truly you are good in all that you do. Accept our heartfelt thanks for the many blessings we receive from your gracious hand. You have revealed yourself to us as our refuge and strength. May a spirit of thankfulness always live in us. To you be praise now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Our second lesson this evening is taken from James, the first chapter, just a couple of verses, 16 through 18. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. We respond by joining in verses 1 and 4 of hymn 611. stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel lesson tonight taken from the 19th chapter of Luke's gospel beginning at the first verse. Uh, Zacchaeus responds to the good news of Jesus, uh, the Savior, and thanksgiving for his good gifts uh, by paying all these things back. Uh, Luke 19, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore a fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. We may know the nations, what he has done. You may be seated. We'll continue with hymn 597.
Grace and mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to consider a section of God's Word from Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 14, we read this. This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. In the name of our triune God, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. That is a, it's just a marvelous hymn. It's a fantastic hymn. You just can't help but sing that at Thanksgiving, right? It's just, it has to be sung. And with apologies to those of you who might have heard this, if you know the backstory to this hymn, it's absolutely amazing. The hymn was written by a German pastor in the 1600s named Martin Rinkert, lived in the city of Eilenburg. He was the pastor of this town during the Thirty Years' War. Three times, armies passed by Eilenburg and demanded tribute from the people in Eilenburg. The people sent out Pastor Rinkert to negotiate with them, try to lower the, the tribute that they were supposed to pay. In 1637, the plague came through Eilenburg and killed 8,000 people. Pastor Rinkert was the last remaining pastor in town and was doing up to 50 funerals a day as, during this time period. I don't think I can comprehend this man's life and the struggles that he faced. My, my life has been ridiculously easy compared to what this man endured. And yet it's Pastor Rinkert who writes, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. He wrote it, not me. How could a man who endured such difficulty write such a beautiful hymn of thanksgiving? <coughs> Too often, I'm afraid, our thanksgiving, year-round or at the, the festival of thanksgiving, focuses on, on the earthly things we have, or maybe the bad stuff we don't have, but it's very much at times, just focused on the stuff that we have. And not that it's wrong to be thankful for that. Our first lesson, Noah comes off the ark, and God promised, I'm gonna make sure it keeps working. This world will keep producing things for you so that you will have the stuff that you have. There's reason to be thankful for that, it really is. And there's reason to be thankful for the people that God has put into our lives. Those are blessings from God. We should certainly be thankful for those. But if, that, if that's the cap, if that's all the higher our thanksgiving goes, I think we're, we're missing out on something, something that Pastor Rinkert found. We're missing out on the unseen treasures that we have that are of far greater worth than anything we could possibly own. We're missing out on understanding what it is to belong to God and to be in his family. As Paul writes these words from, chapter, or from, Ephesians, from Ephesians chapter one to the Christians in Ephesus, his thankfulness was for their, their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. Paul's thanks was not about the stuff they could store away in a closet the things they could have, the, the numbers they could put on a spreadsheet. Paul's thankfulness was for unseen blessings. In a different epistle, in 2 Corinthians, the apostle Paul would write, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And our text really illustrates that, doesn't it? Paul's thanks was for the faith and the love that lived in these Christians. I want you to just think about that a little bit this evening. Think about the, the treasures you have that you cannot see but are very real. 
the treasures you have because you're a part of God's kingdom, because the Lord Jesus has claimed you. What do you think would happen tonight if I could guarantee you that God was going to appear here? Maybe Jesus was going to come walking out to ask me to step aside. Pastor Wentner, I'll take the sermon from here. If we could announce that, that Jesus was going to be here, I don't think we could build a big enough building, could we? We don't have enough folding chairs for the crowd that would be here. They'd be coming hours before the service. But you know that's what happens in your church, right? You know that, that Jesus comes to you and he talks to you through his word he speaks to you. He pulls back the veil and shows you what God is like. Tells you about a God who came into this world to, to save you. That your God is not an angry God in heaven who's got this long list of demands that you couldn't possibly keep and it's hopeless you're going to hell someday. Yours is a God who reveals to you compassion and love, forgiveness for those sins that are real, but real forgiveness, your, your faith in the Lord Jesus, Paul writes about, your faith in the Lord Jesus connects you to what Jesus has done for you. Jesus has appeared to you. He's touched you. In the water of baptism, there he was at work in your life. When you receive the Lord's Supper, there he is, Jesus' own body and blood for you. God does come to you. He does appear to you. You are known by God. A couple chapters later in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul would, would say this about our, our reason to be thankful. He says, in him, that is in Jesus, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. You have the right to approach God with freedom and confidence. You can pour out your concerns and your cares to him and he's genuinely interested. He wants to hear from you. You can go there with confidence, not that he's ah, too busy today. No, he's never been too busy. Not for you. He's claimed you as his own child. Through faith in, in your savior, he's made you one of his own. So great is your Savior's love for you that he suffered and died for you. And I know you've probably heard that more times than you can count, right? But that's not just something a pastor has to say in the middle of a sermon where we all of a sudden have to talk about, about Jesus dying on the cross. That's the actual life-changing message of what your God has done so that you are free from your sins, so that you can approach your God with freedom and confidence, so that you can live with the confidence that not even death has any say over you. Your Lord Jesus has claimed you. He has changed you. And you live in the freedom of the gospel. You live in the freedom and the hope that come from having a Savior. Can't hold that, can you? Can't hand that to someone else. Here, hold this. It's, it's not tangible, is it? But don't be fooled. It's real. Just because you can't hold it, it's very real what your God has done for you. He has made you his child. And, and although you can't hold it, and while you should be thankful for the things you can hold and touch and see, you have no greater reason to be thankful than for the things you can't see, for the things that, that you can't touch, for the faith that lives in you that connects you to Jesus Christ and all his promises of love and compassion and presence in your life. In Proverbs, this one's in chapter 14, we are told, when calamity comes, the wicked are brought down, but even in death, the righteous have a refuge. That disaster, whatever it may be, that takes away things from the unbeliever, takes away everything they've got. The best stuff about you, the most valuable treasures that you have, 
There's nothing that can take them away. No storm, no disaster, no other person. For the Lord Jesus Christ has claimed you, has sealed you as his own in that water of baptism, and is never going to let you go. Freedom and confidence, Paul writes about. Yeah, that's what we have. And no one can take that away from us. That's our treasure. That's our reason to be thankful. And Paul tells us in the text another part of that treasure. He says it's your love for all the saints. He gave thanks for that. For the love that these Ephesians had, for the saints they knew in their congregation, the saints they didn't know. Your love for all the saints. Can't touch that either, can you? Can't hold it, can't put it in a closet. But it's real. Truth is, God brings us together in groups of Christians, in congregations, so that this love can be a part of our relationship with one another. So that we can love and serve one another as a reflection of what it is that Jesus has done for us. So that we can use our gifts for one another. Jesus told us, love each other as I have loved you. His apostle John would write in his first epistle, Dear friends, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Or John would also add, Since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. God has brought us together as, as fellow believers. The fact of the matter is, without Jesus, we may never have met one another. Wouldn't have the slightest idea who a lot of these people are. But do you realize now, that through faith in Jesus, we're going to know each other forever, for eternity. Your love for the saints, Paul writes to the Christians in Ephesus, it gives me reason to be thankful. That's the love that, that our Lord has put in each of us, a love that can infect our congregation. It's a love that leads us to do things for, for people we might not have ever even met. If you look on the back of your worship folder, you'll see that this year, now this fiscal year, I guess it was, over a million dollars was given by people in our church body to help people who were in some sort of trouble through Christian aid and relief. A million dollars given. You had no idea who was going to get that money. That's Christian love, isn't it? That's why our congregation has and, and continues to, to contribute money to our synod so that it can, our synod can do mission work to people we may never meet here on earth. Other side of the planet, next state over, we don't care. People are hearing about Jesus. We love that. We can't give enough to that. That's Christian love. We do it with one another and we do it as we join together with others. You can't touch it. You can't touch that Christian love. You can't hold it. You can't always quantify it. But you know, I know. You know when it's there, right? You can tell. You can tell when a congregation loves, when the people love each other. It's a powerful draw to the community. When they see a congregation that's filled with love, people want that. Oh, they want that. They want to belong to a group like that. I pray that God grants us that spirit of love, that we can always be thankful for that love for one another that that love lives here among us. Pastor Rinkert understood that thankfulness was not dependent on the circumstances of his life. Goodness sakes, if it was, that man would have gotten bitter and angry. But he wasn't because of what he saw. Well, not with his eyes. But what he saw from his God he saw a God who loved and saved him. He saw a God who was with him during the unspeakable troubles that he faced. And he knew the great hope that no one could take away from him. The same hope you have. The same God, the same Savior. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. God grant you the faith to see the stuff before you and be thankful for it. You should. The blessings you have in your life, the earthly things, yes. 
God grant you the faith to see all the rest of it too. The unseen treasures that are yours because the Lord Jesus Christ has brought you into his church because the Lord Jesus Christ has claimed you now and forever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Amen. We're going to continue by singing hymn number 626. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh Lord, you are a refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of need. We've come here this evening to give thanks to your holy name for all the things that you have given to us, especially those spiritual gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, the fellowship that we enjoy as believers, the kingdom of heaven that we're looking forward to, eternity that we're going to spend together. In humility, we present these gifts to you tonight and implore you to use them as a blessing for your church. Hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll continue now with the responsive prayer of thanks, pages five and six. Lord of heaven and earth, you made all things beautiful. You provided green forests and refreshing streams. You've arranged the orderly procession of day and night for our work and rest. Thank you for the mountains and the prairies, the roaring sea and the gentle breeze. 
Thank you for roofs that shelter us, for clothing that protects us, and for food and drink. Thank you for our work, for projects that are done well, and for the approval of supervisors and teachers. Thank you for all who serve at night to make our days more pleasant. Thank you for associates at work, for their encouragement and praise, and for the joys of human friendships. Thank you for our cities and our countrysides, for farms and factories, for streets and highways, and for all of life that flows so swiftly before us. Thank you for the morning greetings we receive and for all the smiles that come from faces loved by you. Thank you for Christian parents, for their affection and their care. Hear us, Lord, now as we give thanks for personal blessings. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for his coming to us in word and sacraments, for his giving and forgiving, and for listening to our prayers. Receive our gifts and offerings as our sacrifice of praise. Lead us in thankful living today and always. Amen. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll close with uh, hymn 507. Oh, shit. 
Excuse me. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> I'm going to do it a couple more times. Uh, really, only one announcement. We're going to do this same... <coughs> Better that it happens now than in the sermon, I guess. We're going to do this same worship service tomorrow morning at uh, Woodlawn. And if you did not write in, draw, or mutilate your bulletin in any way, we wouldn't mind getting at least some of them back so we can use them tomorrow, so that we have enough for the service tomorrow. If you did write in, draw, or mutilate it, that's fine. I'm sure there's enough that didn't. But if you didn't, we'll take it back. Thank you. <laughs> 